Hey folks, my guest today is Garrett Mayer Goot. He's building a tool and a company called directconsulting.com. It's the customer generation agency for SaaS. He's running it as CEO. It's an award-winning performance marketing agency for software companies headquartered out in Irvine, California. It launched in 2014. The company has had exp- has expanded a team of 20 to 95 people across three global offices, LA, New York City, and London. Garrett, you ready? Garrett, you ready to take us to the top? Yeah, man. Let's have some fun. Excited so- to chat with you. Yeah, yeah, this is interesting. So, so what got you into this? Were you sort of a you know a top sales rep at one of these SaaS companies and then left, or how, what got you into SaaS? No, man, I never did anything with SaaS actually. Um, I was selling five dollars social media calendars on Fiverr. Um, yeah, honestly, so I was selling five dollars social media calendars, and then I got my first client was like a uh, shawarma shop. And I helped them out. I was like, I didn't know anything about search or digital yet. I was mostly just doing like Yelp and Facebook pages. And then from there, essentially, I just tried to do my best. I came back to get paid on the 30th day. He said, come back tomorrow. And the whole place was boarded up. So that was our very first client. And then I got a hookah shop, did their SEO. He asked me, I did a website. He's like, hey, can you do SEO? I was like, I'd never done it before. I'll figure it out. I ranked him number one for everything in a couple uh, months. And then from there, I just kind of kept plugging, brought my best friend along. Um, what year was that? That was probably 2014. 2014. Yeah. And guys, I don't want to bury the lead. I don't want you to you know, stop the episode now. The reason I brought Garrett on is because he's now working with some of the, you know, the brand name SaaS companies, whether it's Sendoso or post-IPO companies like Blackline, even folks like Build.com. Obviously, you guys heard Alex Bean come on from Divi right before Build.com bought those guys, Sumo Logic. We're going to dive into all of that today. So... Garrett, fast forward to today. How are you helping somebody like, you know, Zach Lee or Sendoso or ZoomInfo? Yeah. So there's a big problem we're trying to solve in the market that every marketing leader is getting their butt kicked by, which is most SaaS organizations exist today because they solve, they solve a specific problem in a specific niche. And search, which is the default, I have a hundred grand, I'm going to spend it. Let's go to Google ads is somehow this like default mentality. But the problem with Google ads is it has intent, but not firm graphics. And so what happens is it's very difficult to scale while controlling your life cycle stages down funnel. And so what happens is people try to go to LinkedIn, but then the problem with LinkedIn is it has firm graphics, but it doesn't have intent. And so we developed our own methodology here called customer generation, which is essentially looking to build upon the promise demand gen forgot about, which is how do I actually increase revenue? And so we help organizations move from MQLs as like the signposting to SQLs so that everything we do is filtered through sales and then essentially deleted the go-to-market function that the playbook everybody uses on LinkedIn. So the playbook on LinkedIn, let's say, if you're bill.com is like the ultimate guide to AP software, decreasing accounts receivable, whatever that is, right? Like they have this guide and then you do lead gen, right? Like you download an asset and then you try to send it to an SDR and the SDR hates your guts because they call them and they've never read the asset before and the timing's not right. And so what we figured out how to do is how do you get people to commit to a sales meeting directly from LinkedIn at scale? And that can completely change your pipeline amongst a bunch of other tactics. So let's start with like results and then work back to like how you got some of these results, like via a case study. Everyone knows Sendoso really, really well, right? They just did a big round. They're basically, you know, corporates and the really the leading corporate sort of sending program, whether that's gifts or things like that. Can you talk about the results you drove for them and then backfill how you did it, or at least tease us a little bit? No, I mean, every account's different because some clients are going to want to do certain tactics and they're not. So it's not that there's like a universal playbook you can apply, right? It's like we have Zoom Info as well, right? So like all the kind of the top marketing softwares you think about, they're either in our pipeline or, or, or we're, they're clients of ours, um, amongst other industries, right? A lot in cybersecurity, a lot, frankly, everywhere. I think we have about 125 accounts and they all are, you know, over 100 employees, 25 plus million in funding. Okay, so if someone's listening right now with under 100 employees, you're probably not going to be the right fit. They need 100 million in funding and more than 100 employees. 25 million in funding. So we do help like uh, Series A type companies, but they're usually, let's say, um, the it companies, if you know what I'm talking about. Like they usually yep. have a little bit more funding, they have a little bit more maturity in their marketing organization. But results wise, 
I can just use myself as a case study. I think it's more appropriate because I actually do this for myself. I think if you're going to hire an agency, you should hire someone who can do it for themselves. Can we uh-huh. hear it? So I really, uh, so I just, I disagree with you there. I really want to make this episode valuable for software founders listening. And if you give an example of how a software company works with you, they will take, and they will learn from it, even if they don't ever pay you for anything. Can we, can we use a software company as an example? Yeah, I'll use this like a metaphorical one. So the, the, with software, the way we like to look at it is kind of short-term and long-term at the same time. And so most software companies have actually a blessing in review sites. And so most of companies have to try to grind out for years to kind of become number one or number two or number three in their category. But what review sites let you do and what most people don't realize is you can essentially pay to be number one. And so what we help do is we help to look at it holistically because the buying journey requires multiple, a lot of times these SaaS companies, a buying center. So you have to figure out how do you get someone from apathy to action? So on LinkedIn, we're running Convo ads. On review sites, we're positioning them. What's a, convo, what's a convo ad? Yeah, so a Convo ad is a new ad unit on LinkedIn. And so Convo ads are really, really special. You can only send a, 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 the, a LinkedIn user can only receive one ad every 30 days. Now, the problem with Convo ads is they recommend the default bids to be like 30 cents. And so a lot of people send them, but they never get received because they get outbid. We don't ever do a bid for less than $5, for example, because it's this valuable real estate and it's about 70% cheaper than sponsored content. It functions like a lead gen ad, but the key to this is gift cards. So what we help people do is use gift cards with a full LTV CAC model and then base that off of opportunities or deals to drive revenue. So let's say we're working with Sendoso and actually ironically sending gift cards with their platform. Yeah. The, The goal here is to look at all your channels in the LTV CAC model. You take into account your gross margin, retention rate of customers, churn, all your KPIs, and you actually build out your life cycle stages. And you can start to answer the question, hey, if I raised another $100 million in funding, where would I allocate it? And so we help our clients get really good with capital allocation. And then within the actual Convo ad, we're writing the copy and then using gift cards to get people to a meeting And then we're using tools like Chili Piper to get it to be scheduled. So you decrease your no-show rates and we're essentially helping them drive pipeline, whether it's through Convo ads, organic, or even let's say Google ads. Garrett, let's stay on this real quick. The the client is Sendoso. They're paying you to help them get leads. Give me the copy. Let's say I was one of the target audience. I was a head of HR at a big company that Sendoso wants to get me to send gifts out, right? To to, to my employees, right? So I'm a target customer. What might you put, like what's the actual text of that combo ad that you might send me and what's the gift card size? Yeah, so we've tested millions of dollars of gift cards. Um, The most effective price point is a hundred bucks. I don't use a hundred dollars because it doesn't, I like everything we do to be shockingly memorable. So the copy would go like this. Hi, Nathan, 29 minutes, $105 gift cards and gift giving technology you've never dreamed is possible. That's the hook. And then we help brands like X, Y, and Z deliver gifts and delight in a new modern era. Take 29 minutes, hop on a call with one of our team members. At the end of the call, we're going to send you a $105 gift card. Sound good? And then it goes into conditional logic. And so the way a convo ad works, it uses like, yes, no. And so let's say, and so we can qualify them still. So so we'll say, hey, do you manage gift giving at your organization? Let's say yes or no. And if they say yes, we can put them into our sales funnel. If they say no, we can put them into like a Slack community or some type of bridge where they can still interact with the brand, even though they're not ready to buy. That's interesting. Give us a couple more examples. Let's say you're doing this for bill.com. What white, what might their copy say? You can do the same thing there. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. Well, well, just, well, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's, so it's 29 good. minutes is 105 gift card, but, the, but you just said, you know, do you leave corporate gifting, right? That's obviously Sendoso specific. What would like a bill specific.com sound like? Do you manage ARAP or something like that? So you're just taking it into that value prop. Now the, the bigger mistakes is actually not the copy you can play with and get better at. There's a bigger issue of what happens at SaaS organizations when they go to market. They're not disciplined. And what I mean by that is I can't tell you how many organizations, let's just say, honestly, frankly, like 99% of them have too small of a budget for an amount of verticals and personas they're trying to target. Mm -hmm. It's like the number one plague is killing them. And so essentially what they do is let's say they have $50,000 a month to spend. They'll then want to spread that out across healthcare, 
government, whatever those industries are, right? Let's say five industries. And then we all have this lie that we've been told that we need to market to decision makers. And that's BS. So the biggest problem in SaaS is they all think the C-level and the V-level is how you market digitally. And it's actually not true. I have a saying that I believe the champion is more important than the decision maker. So what we help our clients do is we'll go through their client list. We'll work with their finance organization, their sales organization, and we'll start to pull out which vertical has the highest close rate, which vertical has the best gross margin, which vertical has the largest LTV. Cool. Can I go through your clients and see who your point of contact is in all those engagements? And then I'll enrich it with their title. Now, all of a sudden, I've started to get who's truly they're your persona because it's never what the marketing and sales org thinks. It's always, you know, we sell the C, it's like bill.com. They would always sell the CFO. The truth is your, 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 your person's actually the accounting manager. It's not the CFO, but everybody Wait, That's valuable. Them. Give give a couple more examples of that. So who did Sendoso think they were selling to and who did you discover they were actually selling to? Ooh, I don't know that one, to be honest. I mean, what I, about I Sumo have, Logic? So I don't know. I have, I mean, I've got like 150 employees, man. I don't run the campaigns personally all the time. I mean, so can I you, can you me. give, can you give one or two other examples of SaaS companies? Yeah. yeah. So like, Let's say uh, Zoom Info, like you might think at Zoom Info that maybe um, the sales org buys it, but you might find that a lot of your buyers could actually be the IT org because they're the ones actually doing the data mining. So another way you can figure this out if you're an organization is you can use the LinkedIn pixel. Mm -hmm. And so what the LinkedIn pixel does is you can put that on the footer of your website, even if you're not running ads, and you can set up your event tracking and you can start to understand which personas and titles and functions are actually buying from you. And it's another way to do it. Um, but my favorite way is just going through your client list and then trying to identify who your point of contact is. And then it's a lot easier to buy. Okay. Tell me more about you as a founder. How do you make money doing this? What, what, what do brands pay you to run this? Um, you know, we, we have pretty decent rates. I'd say right now we're about a percent of spend. So it's like, let's say 15% of spend. Okay. Um, but, you know, average engagement, you know, it's probably 150 grand plus. Over what um, period of time? One year. We only do annual engagements, just like our clients. Okay, got so, it. Yeah. So 150K, which means we have to multiply that times what? Times six, right? Because that's basically 15% of whatever the total spend is. No, I mean, that just depends. I mean, a lot of our clients are spending 2 million a month. Mm-hmm. So, I mean. So you cap it. It's not, always, it's not always 15% then of spend. It'll go down. Yeah. Like the more you spend with us, it'll go down just depending on the engagement, the channels. Like, are we running connected TV for you? Are we running programmatic? Are you an EMEA and APAC? Like Mm -hmm. there's a lot that goes into it. I would just say like 150 is like our low end slash average, to be honest. And and how many customers are you, like, did you work with, uh, I guess, last year in all of 2020? Right around like probably 150. And is that sort of the max you you know you don't want to go more than that you to dilute it and less than that you have to fire people? No, I mean we have a really strong people ops function here, so you know we got a lot of recruiters. I'm essentially a people business, right? Like my product is my people, so I've got a lot of investment in learning and development and recruiting, people operations. We also have our own product function here. So how do you like standardize deliverable? Because if you go get a world class strategist from another organization, they might be super talented, but like we don't use third-party data when we advertise and everyone else in the world does. So there's nuance to how we go to market. Like we have a genuinely different approach. So like 99.9% of people who advertise on LinkedIn use the industries to target. You know what I'm talking about when you're running a LinkedIn ad? It's like industry computer software. What I've found is 50% of that data is incorrect. And so most of our clients come to us and I would argue almost 50% of their budget is wasted Mm pre-impression. Yeah, yeah, just wrong so, targeting. Yeah, it's pretty important to get that right. Um, because well, I want to, I want to focus more. I want to get so we we got like the user story, how you're helping customers. I, I want to dig more though. You as the founder, so you got this going in 2014. You go from Hookah Shop, you end up with like Sumo Logic and Sendoso. There's a lot of journey happening in between there. Um, I guess so. 2014. Take me through. When was your first million dollar year? Do you remember that year? Um, I'm not a huge money guy, but I'd probably say like 2016, 2017. Okay, cool. And what did that feel like as an as a founder? Was that a mo- big moment for you, or have you done this many times before? Oh no, I just started this straight out of school, man. I never done really anything. <laughs> I had like five jobs. I was like, doing so everything. what? That must what did t- take us in your head? 2016, 2017. How'd you feel? Motivated. I don't know, man. I'm not like I'm not nearly where I want to be. So I'm like a pretty driven dude. So I I still work, you know, all day every day. To be honest, like for eight years straight. 
Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I tore my Achilles twice and I'll go to work the same day after surgery. I'll go and lead the exec team. Like, I'm not one of those like people who like my whole thing is I'm here to become a better man and individual and leader. Um, you know, like if I wanted to go make a bunch of money, I could probably just go do independent consulting and charge a bag of money to whoever I wanted to. So to me, it's not really all money related. It's more like culture and leadership related. So like, I'm more proud that like no one at my organization makes less than $70,000. You know, we have hundred percent healthcare. We have really, really, really strong um, values that are fully integrated to the rest of the organization. To me, the money is just a signpost. It means you're doing well. Um, the problem is a lot of people in the agency world, they like to make their blog. They like to make their brand about how successful they are. But like the money you make as an agency is indifferent from the results you drive for clients. And they're usually not correlated because the quickest way to make money in an agency is you just kill your people. Essentially, you just increase your capacity, but that creates burnout. You have poor retention. How many people do you have today full time? I think we're at like 135. Yeah. Like, but I think I've hired 150 people in the last six months. I mean, it's pretty like, wait, sorry, I'm confused. You're at 135 full time right now, but you hired 150 in the past 12 months. Well, because you have like churn. (laughs) <laughs> you don't get to keep everybody, unfortunately. I wish we could. Um, oh, interesting. That's a lot of churn, though. Uh, how many? 150 minus 15? I don't. Oh, you said four. You have 450 right now. No, I only have 135, and I've hired like 150 in the last yeah. six months. Yeah, so basically, the whole team has churned in the past six months. 15 people. 150 minus 135. I'm so confused. You've hired 150 people in the past six months. And today you have 135. So you, you hired your whole team in the past six months. A lot of it. Yeah. Oh, you've exploded. Yeah. Okay. That, okay. Yeah. So I'm just missing part of the story here. Got it. So you <laughs> are, you, 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 how many people did you have in uh, 2019? 40, 35. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> okay. There's been a lot of growth in the past 12 months. Yeah. in the last, since uh, March. I see. Okay. What, what happened post COVID everyone, everyone has budget now. Oh uh, yeah. COVID was tough. I was about like 60 to 75 people in 2019, 2020. And then we downsized in COVID um, right in the beginning, but then we held really strong. We grew about 1% last year. And then this year we're up. Jeez. I have no, it's insane number. Um, mostly because like I was saying, our methodology is different. Um, everybody's getting their butt kicked on LinkedIn and they can't scale on Google ads. Like genuinely, it's a really, really bad problem Mm -hmm. because what everybody's doing on LinkedIn is they're still slinging asset downloads and then they're trying to send like MQLs to SDRs. Yeah, Gary, I I, so I want to keep focusing on you because we get it. I mean, everyone listening understands like they're wasting money on LinkedIn and you have a better way. So I get that. But so you scaled down to 45 during COVID. You're scaled back up to 135 today. Will you guys be profitable this year or are you break even? You're going to reinvest everything back into business. No, so like, I usually run us like a little leaner on purpose because um, we spend so much on sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I think that's, what's kind of cool. Like, I don't know in my world, like agencies don't actually spend on advertising despite that's what they're supposed to be good at. (laughs) Yeah. So um, for us, we reinvest almost all of it, but like, we're kind of starting to go into that next phase uh, where we have to kind of prepare to have the right trailing 12 months, the right, trailing 24 months of EBITDA. And so, you know, for us, we are profitable uh, and we have a really nice business model. It just depends on how aggressive I'm pursuing top line revenue. And that also depends on our capacity, our recruiting function. The job market's hell right now, to be honest. Like it's really, really difficult. And so most of what we're doing right now is building for 2022 and then restaffing and reorging because we scale so fast. Got it. That yeah, it's yeah. not like, you know, tech. That, make, that makes sense. We're, we're running out of time, but just, so just to be clear, 135 people and you said everyone makes more than 70K and you're profitable. So 70K times 135 is about 9 million bucks in revenue. Is it fair to say you're doing more than that? Yeah, definitely. Okay. And what do you think you'll break in 2022? Oh, I don't share revenue, man, to be completely honest with you. But... Um, okay, well, you just, just, you just you just did right. So you're above you're above nine million bucks in revenue because you told the team size and seventy k is is minimum. Yeah, I don't really share numbers, man. Sorry. <laughs> okay, well, you shared a bunch of numbers. So what what I'm I'm totally fine not and not asking you things that you're not comfortable sharing. But you just shared sort of more than nine million bucks in revenue. What is your growth target for next year? Are you trying to grow 100 percent year over year? Or you want to stay flat and stay consistent? What, what's yeah. your 
Well, right now we're doing about, we're trying to grow 10% month over month. So I try to use month over month because the cool part about using relative numbers when you think about OKR setting is your team can always reset. So most people set goals in quarterly functions and they use absolutes. So we want to get X amount of revenue this quarter. Now, the problem is if you have a bad month to start the quarter, you have to reset and, and nobody, and then it's like you're losing. So then you spend the next two months where your culture and the growth and the organization, how your team's approaching it goes down. So what I like to use is relative numbers. Cause even if you miss, let's say in July, you only grew 8%. Actually, it's easier in August to grow 10% because you actually like it has diminishing marginal returns. Got, so got it. Yeah. And, and so just to be clear though, um, I mean, when you said you had 150 customers earlier and that the average pays 150 grand a year, that would be $22 million in revenue. Uh, does it, do, do people come in for lower than 150K per year? Not much lower. Um, okay. I think so your are about 10K a month. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, okay. Got it. So 10K a month, that'd be like 120. So, I mean, you guys are doing more than 20 million bucks a year than in revenue right now. I mean, you could, some people could argue that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just, I'm multiplying your numbers. If the average customer pays 10 grand a month and you, you said you had 150 customers, I can multiply those, right? Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, c- congratulations. That's great. Um, you've done all this bootstrapped or you raised? No, I did it bootstrapped. I never put any money into the business. I, I'm like, I come from like blue collar, like both me and my partner. So now, yeah, we don't have any money. We don't have any parents with money. We don't have any experience. We just work hard. I love that. Working hard is good. Let's wrap it here with the famous five, Garrett. Number one, favorite business book. Ooh, I like good to great. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Um, I always find what Elon does with PR interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, is there I a strategy like, there or is it off the cuff? I think eccentric, like I think he knows how to move public markets with his personality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building the business? Oh, I like Fathom. Nobody really talks about that one. Fathom's pretty cool. So yeah. Like I still run a lot of our finances actually, just because like I'm like hiring for a new head of finance. So I like Fathom. It helps. Like I've been using it for about six, seven years. You can start to model out like, hey, if I wanted to get my gross margin to 65%, what do I have to do with my variable cost or my price right now? And you could start to model out scenario planning um, in a really easy way. And they do a good job educating you if you're not a finance person. Um, my background was economics. So I kind of enjoy modeling and things like that. Um, but yeah, I love Fathom. It's a pretty cool tool. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Like, I don't know. I went to bed like 8.30 last night. I woke up at seven, so a lot. Okay, that's good. Yeah. And what's your situation? Married, single kiddos? Uh, married, uh, family. of I got two under two and I got a third on the way. Two under two and a third on the way. So three. Wow. Okay. That's two and three. a half. Like, I guess yeah, two yeah, yeah. Like a little older Busy now, guy. Yeah. How old are you, Garrett? Uh, just turned 30. 30. All right. Last question. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. <sighs> everything. <laughs> you don't know anything when you're 20. I still don't know anything. Um, I would probably just say like industry you choose, none of that really matters. Just go, do it longer and work harder than everybody else. Like if you do that, you can make more money, and be more successful, whatever you kind of use as your signpost. So like me, I never really tripped on what I got into. I just kind of keep working hard and kind of go from there and just enjoy yourself. Like everybody I- worries too much, you know? Guys, Directive Consulting launch back in 2014, started with SEO at a hookah shop. Now over 135 folks on the team took a bit of a hit during COVID. He went down to 45 folks, but hired a bunch over the past 12 months. Lots of growth. Now working with 150 brands, many of them the big SaaS brands you guys know, Sendoso, Sumo Logic, Zoom Info, et cetera. Folks can get started at 10,000 bucks uh, per month, so 120,000 bucks in ACV, doing well over 10 million bucks in revenue as he looks to scale 10% month over month. Garrett, thanks for taking us to the top. Thanks, David. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers. They try and do a deal live, and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition,
a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.